Sway in the morning, Shane 4-5. It's a good day today. Let the applause run. It's a good day today. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's a beautiful day today. I often tell this story about our guest that's here with us this morning. I use it a lot to show people that sometimes in, in, your, in your journeys you're going to face a lot of adversity and it's good to surround yourself with people who are clear-minded and that love you, um, that is always going to be honest with you. And I've been doing radio since 1990, so that's 29 years now. Wow, Callaway. That's crazy, right? <laughs> but somewhere around 1998, 99, uh, after King Tech and I had really launched a, a world-famous wake-up show, and it became an entity of its own. It became way bigger than we could ever imagine to be. We created tours for artists and broke a lot of artists before they, before they were on anybody's radar. We did a lot of uh, mixtapes to promote a lot of artists before they were on anybody's radar. We did merchandising. We put out DVDs. We put out CDs of different artists before they were on anybody's radar. Um, that whole ideology of using our platforms to break new artists from different places didn't start with us, you know. And one of the people that we've always admired and kind of emulated our spirit um, behind was the man that's here today. And I remember after achieving all those things in the late 90s, I went to him and said, hey, man. He asked me, as he always does, how's the family? How are you doing? And I remember telling him, man, it's cool, man. He asked me, how were things on the West Coast? And I was like, man, I'm really, I think I had it. I'm good now. Man, the game has changed. It's 98, 99. You know, <laughs> you know the, the, the music that's coming out, I don't know, man. You know, it's, you know, it's a lot of the great things I like. It was a lot of great music coming out, but the business itself was frustrating me. And I said, man, I'm about to do something else and quit. And that man sat me down and said, you can't leave. Hmm. You, where are you going to go? We need you here. It's too soon for you to leave. You haven't done all that you are aimed to do. Where are you going? <laughs> we need you to stay. Don't go anywhere. And being that it came from him, it was like, who am I to not listen to this advice that this man gave me, considering who he is to me? And that was 21 years ago. Wow that he told me that advice and today with honor i get to have him on our show 21 years later doing sway in the morning the iconic the architect the one and only dj red alert Woo! ladies and gentlemen red alert is here man that, that's a lot of titles man, 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 you got me Virgo, man. What do you mean that's a lot of titles? A lot of titles. What's up, everybody? everybody. What's, What's up, up, Red? What up, Red? What's going on, everybody? Ah, uh, good, man. I, I wanted you to come up. Me and Red were having a conversation, and once again, Red was giving me this great idea that I should be doing and um, and celebrating the 20-year anniversary of the anthem, which was a collaborative record that King Tech and I put together that included artists at that time that were at the top of the game, the RZA, Eminem, Tech 9 Chino Excel, J.O. Felony, Cool G Rap, Pharaoh Munch, uh, KRS-One. Uh, we had Beat Boys in there, Cool Joe. Uh, Ken Swift was also um, in that video as well. W uh, Wicked was in that video as well. And um, uh, um, Ivan, um, the B human Boy action, B-Boy Ivan, the human action figure was in there. And we wanted to pay homage to hip hop. And the person who closed that video for us, the video was a whole story. And when we ended the video, uh, what we did is we had to, uh, we had a book that we had the, the video frame in. And we closed that book, like closing the chapter, and then it turned out to be Red Alert in the classroom telling people about hip-hop. And see, this started so many years ago, and look how far we've come. Mm. Um, and, uh, and so it's the 20-year anniversary of that video, and Red said, man, did you do the documentary yet? I said, no, nah, nah, man. <laughs> he said, are you kidding me? All those different people on one song? Y'all should be doing that. That joint is so classic, so classic. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about after you know I chat with you because when I was thinking about when I did that thing in front of the kids, mm -hmm. they're adults now. Yeah, they in their twenties. Yeah. So can you? They can imagine they was part of history. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, but um, that's something that need to be done because listen here, that collector that you had, all that them artists. Yeah. On that one song. 
the anthem. And, and that and the anthem and at that time, that was the last of the real official videos at that time. Mm. And the way how you had the scenes going in and out from one to another, I mean the impact was strong. I mean, real hip hop heads know. They know. They know. And, and that's the interesting thing about it. You know, those collaborative records, man, let me ask you this, because the first Co- big for me at least collaborative record that I heard um, that I was like oh my gosh what was this was the symphony mm. okay uh, yes okay the symphony and, uh-huh. and, and all the various people that was on the G rap yes. Daddy came you know Master Ace mm-hmm. you know Craig G all these different people um, that were featured on the on the symphony was that the what, in your opinion what was one of the big first collaborative uh, songs you recall. I would say that had to be one of them. That was 88, I believe. That came out in 88. Yeah, um, as a collector of more than two. You know, uh-huh. I mean, the first two that I could remember in my in my ears during the time in the mid-80s was when Biz and Kane did something uh-huh. together. Um, uh-huh. I forgot the name of that record, but it was more like a freestyle. Uh-huh. And Rhyming that with was Biz? Like, huh? Rhyming with Biz? Rhyming with Biz. Okay. And that was, to me, like... The introduction of Kane at the time, even though Kane was coming along because Marley had p- uh-huh. put some tracks out. Marley in Marr, the producer, yeah. legendary producer. Marley Marr, producer. You rest in peace with Mr. Magic. And but DJ. when that rhyme with um, Biz came out, and then, you know, it, like, boom, boom, it just took it. So I think that was a set-off right there. That was the set-off right to there. To me. Let's hear a little bit of that right there. Leak y'all in the house. I'm freaking packed in the house. Hey, you got Big Daddy Kane in the house. Juice Crew in the house. That's right. Hey, my name is Ben the Ben Marquis. We gonna rock a little something like this. One, two, what you gonna do? I say yes, yes, y'all. Still to be all. Party having people guaranteed to be like having a ball. Red Alert is here, man. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I like that. And then right after that, you had the introduction of Q-Tip by the Jungle Brothers. Uh-huh. With the song, the promo, which was actually a promo for my show on the radio. Oh, so wow. th- that's how Q-Tip got introduced to the world. Yes. Uh-huh. It was a song called a promo. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. This was so hard. And around what year was this, man? This was 88. 88. Yes. Check this out. Jungle Brother. JB for short. I bite a bit my mom and we almost fought. Fight. But since he was a brother, I thought that would be wrong. So I let him go. I let him run along. Run along. I write rhymes like I come from New York City. My DJ spin the music down to the nitty gritty. Running downstairs like it's five days a week. Searching and seeking for the baby band beat. The Ooh. African rap that comes from within us. Brothers heard about it now. They wish they could have been us. We did an album with no problem. Now we're working on another with another jungle brother. Me. Q-Tip. His name, who? He's into business, not into games. So cute tip when the light turns green. Grab your bone and show him what I mean. My bone is grabbed, this is what I mean. I brag a gab, and here's the scene. Cute tip, cute tip. From a tribe called Quest on the Jungle Brothers album. Oh yes. So get the duckets, it's coming out soon. A month after March, two before June. It's nice. With Ali Shaheed Muhammad, my DJ who? Muhammad. It's real Muhammad. Tommy. Yeah, Jungle Brothers, yes. Q tip, I'm a blackest, blackest. So, you know, that was the time when you had a lot of people listen, learning how to introduce the next set. Uh huh. You know, but then here it is when you had like Marley Mar came out with the symphony, yes. which was 88. Mm-hmm. You know, you had like a form of like the whole entire crew, the Juice Crew. The Juice Crew. You know, and. That was like t- classic to this day. That's classic to this day. Yeah. Arguably one of the best posse records, if you will. Oh yeah, that oh, was yeah. made. Uh, yeah. we, we might have to put our list together. Um, Marley Mall. Let's talk about. And then you also said rest in peace to Mr. Magic. Yes. Let's start with Mr. Magic. You uh-huh. know, because um, Red, I, I, I like to kind of give folks information, and then they could go look up the rest. But who was Mr. Magic, and what was his significance to our culture? Mr. Magic is the blueprint of what hip-hop is on radio mm-hmm. on the independent station whbi 105.9 that turned to wnwk later on down the road in new york city um you had to pay to get have airtime, and he used to come on like two to four i'm talking about four back in 1981 mm-hmm. and he was a like a rebel you no know, he wanted to introduce 
the sounds, the beginning sounds of hip hop, mm-hmm. because you know it wasn't on mainstream radio. They didn't want to touch that, mm-hmm. but he took it upon himself and being involved with a lot of. Um, let me cut this. Off. Well, well, you, I'm got, sorry. you want to answer, man? We got no, 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 no. the phone that's, ring on air. You got to answer. No, that's, no, the that's my man, the sexiest man alive. My man Stacia. I get to him later okay, on. Okay. Just for the record, <laughs> that phone rang all night long. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know about <laughs> Mary Jane girls, right? All right. <laughs> all right. Um. <laughs> So here it is. Magic used to always play all the early rap records. Uh And here it is. It just kept building, building, building. By the time in 1982, he got picked up by the major station, um, WBLS. Okay. Because the the impact he had amongst everybody in the street. Uh Uh-huh. So, you know, he's the blueprint. He's the blueprint. Yes. So when did you come on board? And then who's Jazzy J? Okay. I came on board in 1983. Mm-hmm. Jazzy J is my cousin. Yes. He's the person that him and I, along on the behalf of Africa Band by the Almighty Universal Zoo Nation, he put us on. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jazzy spoke for me to get on because when Jazzy moved to the Bronx with the family from Manhattan, that's when you know, Bam started knowing about him. Mm-hmm. You know, first Jazzy was down with Disco King Mario, rest in peace. Mm-hmm. But then when Bam found out that, you know, he just moved in the Bronx, he said, what are you doing over there with Mario? You need to be with us. So he got down, that's when he, he spoke up for me. So Jazzy was the first person that got on 98.7 Kiss FM. They first was going after Africa Islam. Mm-hmm. But Africa Islam was busy on the road with the um, Rock Steady crew because it's the successor of the movie on Wild Style. So that's when they went after Jazzy. What year was that about? Wild Style came out. Wild in? Style came out 82. What? 82. 82. So okay. they was on tour from 82 into 83. So, you know, as he busy on the road, they couldn't get to um, Islam. So they went after Jazzy. Okay, so let's put these things in perspective. Africa, Bambada, uh, Zulu Nation. Yes. What was Zulu Nation's significance to the culture at that time? They were the significance of showing that there was more than just within the music. Mm-hmm. There was more of peace and knowledge. Mm-hmm. You know, how you can go ahead and conduct yourself and be knowledgeable of what's going on within the black community. But at the same time, the entertainment where it comes to within the break dancing, the b boy. Um, break b boy break dancing, the DJ and the graffiti and mm. also the MC. It, so you know he Bam put everything as a collective coming out of Bronx River. Coming out of Bronx River. Where yeah. was Herc at this time? Herc was still on the west side of the Bronx. You know, uh-huh. Herc was, you know, of course he is the blueprint of hip hop culture. Uh-huh. But you know, as he start moving along, here come the new waves. So you okay. have people such as Bam, Flash, um, rest in peace, AJ. I mean, so many people that was coming right behind Herc. But here it is. Bam has, like, you know, coming from within the gang era, he already had a mindset how to collectively put everybody in one. For uh-huh. us, it was, a crew, it was a crew called an organization for about six months. Right. Then when that died down, that's when he formed the Zulu Nation. And he had people who was dancing. He used to call them Shaka Zulu Kings and Shaka, uh-huh. Shaka Zulu Queens. Uh-huh. But, no, it like kept on growing and growing and attaching for more than one. Shout to Charlie Rock. Charlie Rock. Charlie Rock, my man, one of the B-Boys and MC. And one MC. time, Bam had 10 MCs. Uh-huh. But he broke it down as he broke it down to different divisions. So you had Soul Sonic here, you had Cosmic here, you had your Jazzy Five here. He still had a couple others on the side. These are all names. As you hear, you can go up and look it up yourself and Google it. It's a, a great history lesson. Rich Nice. Now, where was Brothers Disco at at the time? Because that's, that's, that's DJ Barrett and Breakout in the Funky Four. Uh, uh, Brothers Disco, respect to them guys. They from up there around in um, Eden Wall Projects, by Eden Wall Projects, not far from the Valley area. Right. No, that's the further up in the Bronx, everybody. I know some people are like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's further up in the Bronx going towards Corp City area. Mm-hmm. So, you know, here it is that Bam got to acknowledge more about Breakout, the DJ Breakout. Uh-huh. And, you know, here it is. When Bam like you, he take you under your wing. And before you know it, they become a branch of the Zoo Nation. Okay. Um, you you eventually got down with uh, KRS-One, right? Yes. Um, uh, how bo- that came around. Boogie Down Productions. How that came about through my man. You know, sad keep on saying rest in peace, but we lost so many good soldiers. Big up to my man, Scott LaRock. Scott LaRock and I, we knew each other very well because, you know, we had something in common. We used mm-hmm. to play ball. And um, so 
when he told me he was getting into, into the DJing field, you know, he started doing Broadway International in Manhattan, upper part of Manhattan. And then he started working as a counselor in the shelter. Who come he come across? KRS One. Mm-hmm. And at the same time who was in there with KRS One was also Just Ice. Just Ice. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So here it is. He took to uh, KRS One and then that's when they brought you know, a lot of people don't understand what I'm about to call it, an acid tape, which is a hard copy of a plate before you make actual records. Mm-hmm. And they brought that to my man Raul in Latin Quarters, the club mm-hmm. Latin Quarters. He played it. They went crazy after he finished playing it. That's when Scott handed it to me. He said, this is for you. And I played it on the radio. Now explain to the people about Latin Quarters because that's one of the clubs in New York that's so infamous for music and, and you was the curator of, of this of this of this movement. Latin Quarters was a place that listen here. It's like <laughs> the Apollo of hip hop. Mm-hmm. You if you go make it or break it. You know, I'm going to introduce as much as I can, but it's up to the audience. They believe in it. And how I really got to learn about how the audience started following it, because when you had a crew called the IOU dancers in the middle of the dance floor, and they react to that certain song that I played, and they was into it, before you know it, everybody followed through. So that, that Latin Quarters was like... It was different. It was different. DJ Red Alert is hanging out with us, giving you this hip-hop lesson. You want to learn something, 888-742-3345. It's your culture. Sway in the morning. Hey. You know, it was so crazy because he mentioned Union Square. You know, I was the place I was at before Latin Quarters. That club only lasts eight months, but the eight months it was there, the impact was so crazy uh-huh. that it was known worldwide. That's why everybody said, yo, what's up? Union Square, Latin Quarter. They always put them together. together yeah. You know, it was crazy. Uh, well, you know, those times, those moments are like the nucleus. They set the tone to what we call hip-hop culture uh, to this day. Yes. And even that particular record, when you look at what's going on in the climate today, when you see all the different battles, uh, whether it's uh, uh, Joyner Lucas and Tory Lanez, or whether it was a Nicki Minaj or a Cardi B or, mm-hmm. or Jay-Z and Nas back in the day, yes. this was one of the, it wasn't the first, but this was one of the uh, the the biggest battles that was going between Juice Crew and Boogie Down Productions. Well, you know what? I think about it because I could even take it far back when it was the battle of Mr. Magic against, uh, against me against Mr. Magic. Because I'm on Kiss FM, Magic uh-huh. on BLS, and it was called the Radio Wars. Uh-huh. And so, you know, here was Magic, and Molly had the Juice Crew, and then I had Boogie Down Production along with um, uh, Ultra Magnetic, uh-huh. and then come along Jungle Brothers, and a collected a couple others. But you know what? We played each other's songs. Y'all did? Yeah, we played okay. each other's cause. No, I can't hold back because my man Marley made a hit. I'm going to play for the audience. Uh-huh. And the one thing don't have nothing to do with the other. You know? and, and that's why I feel that we was like the bird of magic at the time. Uh-huh. But everybody always kept on checking to see what was the next thing, what was the next move. And that's why it come out later on. Mr. Magic, MC Shan, Kels One, and I did a Sprite commercial. That's right. What year was that? That came out around, around mid nineties. Mid nineties. Yes. But I remember, and I want to say eighty nine. And to put it in perspective, people on the West Coast, we didn't have the internet. We thought it was some real smoking beef happening, right? <laughs> okay, so we, you know, between Juice Crew and Boogie Down Productions and all the all the affiliates. And then in 89, a song called Self, I think it was 89, Self Destruction. Self Destruction, which is 30 years now. 30 years came out. And, uh, you know, everybody from MC Light to Chuck D, you know, NWA, mm-hmm. KRS One, all these different folks were uh, were on it. And I, I want to say, was that the video in the end? I saw you and Marley Maul next. Was uh, we was close to the end. Yeah. It, was, we, it was Marley Maul and I stand together right next with Dougie Fresh, Fresh. and the Awesome Two uh-huh. at a um, at a grave site. Yeah, and and at that point, I was like, oh, that's cool. Everybody came together mm-hmm. for this cause. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, we still was playing each other's songs, regardless of what on the radio. And even during the time of the Roxanne Roxanne level, I used to DJ for Sparky D uh-huh. while. Either Marley or sometimes Shan would DJ for Shantae. Now, we were on the road together doing shows. Uh-huh. My roommate was Fly Ty. Okay. And Fly <laughs> Ty oh, wow. ran yeah. Cold Chillin', right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, um, that Affiliation with the um, Juice Crew. 
with the juice crew. So battling back then was a little different than now because now people get beat up and might get shot and shot at and yeah. Because you got your man's man all in your ear and want to <laughs> put the chest out and want. And I mean, sorry, but it come to within between power and money got involved with it. Okay. You right. know what happened to within the skill level? Uh -huh. The skill level is still there. Just utilize that. Yeah. After you finish, you win or lose, you go ahead and get, have a drink. And, right. and, and celebrate the next day. That's Red it. alert is here. Let, let's let's go back to the first time you heard Mr. Magic say something negative about you oh, man. on the airways. Ooh. How did you feel? How did you take that? I had to be prepared for that because first, when I say Jazzy was on before me, he used to always talk about Jazzy, calling him a Jazzy jerk, Jazzy whack, jack, <laughs> whack, and all that. So when he started hearing about me, he said, yo, who is this guy down the dial? This guy, this guy with red hair, this Woody Woodpecker. Um, <laughs> yeah, what is they call him red dirt? <laughs> <laughs> red yeah. dirt and Woody Woodpecker out of it. Of course, you know, it's street mentality. I was feeling some kind of way. You uh -huh. feel like, you know, go out. So I remember I came to the program director at the time. I said, yo, man, he on the air dissing me. The program director started laughing. I started getting mad at the program director. <laughs> <laughs> and then he sat me down. He, he, he said, let me tell you something. I understand how you feel. I respect that. But at the same time, he's talking about you. He's advertising. Mm. Mm. So it took a while for it to sink in my mind because, you know, you're in the streets and everybody say, yo, man, he's dissing you. Yo, man, you going to take that in? You know, as you tell you, a lot of Howard Cosell's involved. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but then I had to learn how to let that soak in uh -huh. and I started taking their stride, you know, and then I just let the friend your ability, what you're known for doing, override for what you was thinking what to do. Did I not tell you he's my mentor? <laughs> he's giving up the game. He's giving me. Um, I'm going to fast forward. Uh, one of the things you always did, and, I, you know, we're in 2019, so it's a different time period. But in the 90s, there was division. There was regional division. I think it was caused by the music business. So if you weren't in New York, it was hard to get a song played on the radio in New York unless you had connections to certain people who didn't, who weren't closed minded. So at that, I remember in the nineties, King Tech and I had a company called All City Productions and we were producing a lot of artists and putting them out independently. And one of those artists was a, a artist by the name of Mr. Me. And I remember flying from Oakland to New York without a plan, carrying vinyl to every record pool, every record store, and just showing up at clubs looking very West Coast that I couldn't get in. <laughs> you know, I thought, I, thought, I thought I was looking New York, but I would finally wake, make my way in. I remember Red Alert um, handing him a piece of vinyl with Unsolved Mystery on it in the middle of his set and seeing him put it on while another record is playing, listening to it, and then mixed the song in on the spot that he just heard. Mr. Me was from the Bronx, New York. This was the song right here. Sway in the Morning, Shade 4 or 5. Unsolved Mr. Me. The Unsolved Mr. Me. It was that energy that always, that just kept re reaffirmed for me that, man, I think I'm moving down the right path. I just want to use this platform to give our opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've done that. But Red, you opened the door. I mean, I remember when um, Master P was big everywhere in the country, but in New York they wasn't playing them yet. And even when Make Them Say Um came out, I know people were like trashing it, you know. Mm -hmm. Man, I don't know if you realized uh, how many people you gave hope to because you were iconic then and you kept your doors open to anybody and it was just based on the merit of their music. Ben, did you used to get backlash from other um, DJs in New York for doing that? Because you let a lot of folks in. You know, there were some DJs. You no, know, it's how can I put it? For example, I remember I forgot the name of the song. I remember I started playing this song, and you could see people moving around in the in the spot in the in the station, speaking under their breath, like you play this bullshit. It's not mm -hmm. it. And before you know it, whatever I'm playing becoming a hit. Now they jumping on the board. Okay. So, you know, it's like saying, 
I'm thinking for the audience. I'm not thinking for you. I'm mm-hmm. not think. I know you're my peers. I know y'all look at being competitive. But if I don't go forth with what I believe in, I got to have a gut feeling going for this. If it works, it works. If it don't work, at least I try. Okay. And that's what I always felt like doing when it came to music from all different spectrums. And I learned that even when I introduced PSK by Schooly D. Out of Philadelphia. You know? mm-hmm. And I remember when I played that, a lot of people didn't know where it came from, but I just call it the back door. Why I call it the back door? I never say where it come from. Uh-huh. I just play it, program it. By the time you find out where they be like, oh, I didn't know that. But if I were to tell you right off the top, yo, I got this new joint for Philly, I don't like it. You close my name. Yeah. So I had to do the back door. And that's what I did with all the music. And not only that, when I was on the road with Sparky D, Every city I was going to, I was learning about certain music. Uh-huh. So I was bringing it back and introducing it. Just like nobody knew about the rapping Duke at first. Uh-huh. He wasn't from New York. Uh-huh. You know? So I mean, just a, it's a long list of so many that I just believed in and I just give it a try. Throw soul to soul in there. Soul to soul. I went overseas for the first time and hearing it. And when I got to hear it, Jazzy B, he the one that introduced me. He gave me the acid tape. Uh-huh. I brought it back. I played it on the air. That Monday, program director, his name is Tony Green. He said, hey, brother, what's that you were playing with that Bismarck beat? So what I did, I brought it down to him. He listened to it. He programmed it. Uh-huh. You got to go with your gut feeling. That's a job as a DJ. Soul to soul. Soul to soul. I remember he's the first one to play it here. Keep Yeah. Oh. No, I can't sing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I even, I'm, I'm not in a good voice right now. We're going to play it for a minute. Oh, we'll be back. Right. You want to talk to Red Alert? 888-742. Three, three, four, five. Oh, Got the legendary DJ Red Alert. Um, and who's here? Visionary, architect, producer, personality, mentor, award-winning radio personality, hip-hop icon. A lot of titles. A lot of titles. Ooh. I'm not even done yet. <sighs> Gary from D.C. What up? Hey, Gary. What up? What up? What up? What up? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Sway. How you doing? Yep. Oh, not too bad, man. Hey, uh, Red Alert, I met you back in 86 at the uh, Underground. Wow. 16 years old. Mm. 16 years old trying to get in the club. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Special Ed was in there doing a little, you know, he was out, you guys, everybody was hanging out, whatever, he was about to get on the mic. Okay. So you pulled up, you had a couple guys with you, they jumped out of an MPV and a Pathfinder. The guys were, they were called the Chin Checkers. There were some box, they were up and coming boxers back then. And uh, Curtis Stevens and these guys, they jumped out. Mm-hmm. And they were hanging checkers, with you. Yeah. yeah, the chin checkers. Yeah. No, who they, and, what, that that was with me? Well, there was part of that group that was just walking in. Oh, the chin checkers. Of, okay, my yeah. bad, my yeah. bad. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So DJ Regan was playing, mm-hmm. and that's the, that's my cousin. So I was like, hey, man, you need to get in the club. Right. And you looked at me, he was like, little man, go home and get your books. Leave this club alone. And I said, man, this dude is bugging. Who is this dude that's redhead telling me to get out the friggin' line and, and go home? <laughs> get to your books. Yeah. I looked at him and I went home. Well, we got an altercation with some guys from New York after that. But mm-hmm. I went home to my cousin out in Brooklyn. Then you came on the radio and it was a song called No. And you mixed it because Molly made that song. And you mixed it and you said, Molly, are you better than me? And you scratched it to when he said no. And bust out laughing, man. We went crazy at the house, man. Wow. I still got that on tape. I still got that on tape, man. Wow. Go down son. to history. My, my son, and my son was like, "Who's that dude?" I said, "I pulled up. I pulled up on YouTube." I said, "That's Red Alert." Man. Wow. He told him, "Yeah, that's great." And man. when you say that we jumped out, me and some guys jumped out the MPV. You know who that was? The ori- no, the original violators. The original, original violators. violators. Oh, yeah, who were the violators? You got to break down who the yeah, violators. The violators consist of my man Chris Ali, mm-hmm. my man Big Rod. Then you have my man that we call Dow, we call him Sneaky D. Then we have my man Hans, we call him, he's dark skin. Had Jerry Curls, we call him Black Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and the last oh, one that, that that became successful that took the uh, title violator to a different matter. Rest in peace, my man, Chris, Chris Lighty. Lighty. We call baby Chris. Baby Chris. Chris. And the Lighty family. Hey, uh, Gary, thanks for sharing that story, man. Hey, did you? what, what, what do you do now, Gary? Website where we can get your shirts. What do what, what you do now? Do you have, does he have a website where we can get, like, his shirt? Like how uh, Chuck Chillout has a website. We can go you got a website where people can reach you? Well, thecoolestlegend.com. Cool with a K. Right now, I'm not, I don't have no merchandise. I mean, I did have at one time Pop Master Retro, but I'm getting ready to revamp a couple of different things. So give me time. Man. All right? Yeah. I'm going right. to hey, uh, my son into hip-hop. Appreciate you. 
There you go, respect. man. And then people could follow you on social media too, right? Yes, everything. Start with a K. Cool. Mm. Um, um, Twitter, uh, Graham, you know, Facebook, you know. Just in here, pigeon carrier, either way. Need a pigeon carrier? <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, we got DJ Sneaky Dog from D.C. What up, Sneaky Dog? Hey. Damn, man. Hey, what, what's up, fam? What's up, Sway? What's, what's up, Ridley? Really? What's going on, fam? What's going on, man? What's the deal? Man, you want to call and pay homage, man. You're one of my favorite DJs coming up. I've been a DJ about 20 years, man. I remember when we used to do that um, Joy and Pain Red Alert mix, man. He's one of the best songs I hear on DJs. Okay, I hear that, man. You know, I had a lot of respect for y'all down there in D.C. I'm going to tell you why. Because, number one, my man DJ Cool, I was just with him a couple weeks ago down there in Charlotte. I remember when he came with some of his music in the beginning. I used to play all his joint, Ragga Dance and mm. what the what the hell you came in here for. And, mm -hmm. uh, man, I mean, the early days. And then I used to come down there and play D.C. Live, too. Yeah, the classic, classic club. And, and, and Kilimanjaro. Wow. wow. Hey, DJ Sneaky time, Dog, man, thanks for call calling in, man. We appreciate you, all right? Uh, we got Charlie on the line uh, from the Rocksteady crew. Charlie, what up, baby? Hey, Charlie. Hey, what's going on, peoples? How you doing, family? Peace, peace. Good, good. What up, Red? You tell me, man. What's the deal? <laughs> man, hey, there was this one. Uh, I, I remember when me and you met up uh, down in San Diego. Remember when you was at a spot called L5? Yes. Wow. Yes. And what did I have in my hand when I oh, when I dog. approached you? Uh, you know what? <laughs> man, you talking how many <laughs> years ago, my man? <laughs> man what you I know, doing? I know, I know, I know. My man, <laughs> listen here, man. I don't have a, Charlie. I, don't do that to Red, man. <laughs> man, I don't have a computer chip in my head now. <laughs> what kind of shoes I was I wearing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I remember I being out there though. Yeah, so I walked up to you with a sealed copy of the original Bridges Over. You remember that? Oh, okay. All right, okay. that's he had the sealed copy. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, you had to sign that for me. You know that's what I mean? Cool. Like, oh. hey, I put you this way. I'm probably one of the only uh, guys probably out here on the West Coast probably got the most live radio show mix mixes from you doing it live on, on, on Kiss FM. Okay, respect. And I still got them all. That's what's right. up. Charlie, man, thanks for your call. You a citizen. Sway in the morning. Hey, Red, let me ask you a question, man, because you can still find Red Alert uh, on radio. Um, yes. At the, top of his, at the top of the food chain. <laughs> tell, tell them where they can yes, find I'm you. Yes, I'm still on w WBLS because after they closed down 98.7 KISS FM, mm -hmm. it's been like going on seven years now. So now they got me over there at BLS. I do every Saturday, and I alternate during the after work along with other DJs during the week. Okay. Let me ask you this because you, you're still in the club, just um, promoted, I mean, just DJ that, Soul in the Horn. Red is fire hot uh, right now. You sustain this. This um this level of excellence for so long, but you've seen so much. You know, I I, I live here in New York now, and one of the things that you did um, by opening those doors to artists from all over the country, um, it, it influenced New York in a in a major way. So much so that nowadays, when you start listening to New York artists, it's always the backlash that New York doesn't have its own identity. A lot of the New York artists uh, tend to sound like they were either from the South or from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You would always hear this gripe from folks. Um, but at the same time, you know, music evolves and keeps moving. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you got to understand that according to how everything is being so programmed on radio as well as online, you know, you go to that trance hearing that certain thing over and over and over because they have a machine behind them okay. where they, they keep on being driven. Where there's so many artists that's here in New York that don't have that machine, but they got good music. Mm -hmm. So I, I take time, just like in the past, I still do to this day, I listen to what various things that sound and fit right. And I, if, I wish there was a collective of more than just me, mm -hmm. that get together and get behind these artists and support them. Yeah. Because that's what you saw in down there in, 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 or in the South or out West, in mm -hmm. the Midwest. You know, it's the same thing you could do here because you just can't be like, oh, you're only playing your man stuff and mm -hmm. you're not playing it. No, no, we all play everything together. And that's why I got to respect Flex because when Flex mm -hmm. started doing that radio, on the radio, this is what New York City sound like, he took it on his back to go ahead and introduce the Dave East. Yeah. The, um, uh, the, 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 the young MA, the mm -hmm. um, the uh, A Boogie, and many others that emerging from New York, and there's still a lot of good artists. You know, I take it upon myself where I have a um, a, a page on Mixcloud where I, I introduce the past and the present, and the present stuff I introduce a lot of the sounds from New York that mm -hmm. people don't get to hear. Uh huh. 
So that's what you got to do. Okay, red alert. Red First. alert. Do you think that we're going to reach the point where someone from the LGBTQ community could be a huge star in hip hop? I look at it this way. You learn how to be open-minded and accepted in so many different ways. It's all about your skills. It's not about your gender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I look at it. Red alert, ladies and gentlemen. Red alert. Can I just say that on Friday night, the set you did at Soul in the Horn for Natasha Dick's birthday shout to her was incredible. It was like, you know, our party's very diverse. It has young people and, and, and um, experienced people, I'll say. And I saw kids that was like, 22, 23, 24, jumping around, dancing the records that they heard for the first time, but they were records that we grew up with. And they were asking me, like, when is he coming back? And I said, he just got off the turntables five minutes ago. Like, <laughs> what do you think is the, the, the how, how do you think um, you're able to communicate with the young ones and, and, and the older people at the same time? I think it's all about programming. It's like you got to learn how to read that crowd. That's our job as a DJ. You got to read the crowd and see which direction to take them. You know, you may go off a little bit, but you got to learn how to wheel them back in and you have them all on the same page, no matter what age you are. You know, everybody can join together. Because I know we had a wide range from like the mid-20s on up. Mm -hmm. And everybody got to enjoy this. So, and I know I was playing classics or saying maybe some 70s, 80s, 90s. Yeah. But you know what? It's how you sandwich it, you know, between some hip-hop, some dance music, some oh. disco, as well as some house. Mm -hmm. You put it all together because it's all, it's all effective. It's all effective. Yeah. DB's a DJ, actually. Yeah, and that's what I want to ask you about is the evolution of, I guess, the term DJ. Because it used to be a guy behind two turntables you know, just playing vinyl. And now you can have somebody who might do a festival and just stand up all over his, you know, USBs that are plugged in and just playing. And, you know, he's not scratching. He's not. And that's not to take anything away from a skill of it, but certain people view DJing as the traditional form versus, like, just plugging in and just, you know, pumping your fist all day. What do you think? Well, once again, here it is, how people are programmed in today's time because, you know, they try to erase all the, um, the skill level out. And some people say they don't want to hear the mixing. They don't want to hear the scratching. They just want to hear the music. So you know what? You got to continue to introduce yourself saying, yo, this dude can go right along, you know, because even though you just want to go ahead and just push play, mm -hmm. you can also learn how to push yourself to uh, the skills or learn how to mix, how to scratch and everything else. If the audience believe in you so much, they go going to vibe with you. But you know, if you just go limit, if you go limit them by just giving you a push button, then you know you're cheating on them, mm. because you're not really being honest and true to your audience. Go ahead, don't go for the dollar. Go for the go for the knowledge of what you could become down the road. Hmm. Mm. Red alert. Which female artist do you think has made the biggest impact to your ears? Ah oh, man, it's quite a few of them. Right. It's quite a few of them. Oh man. Um, it's hard to say because I'm thinking of different eras. When I think of my era, I'm thinking of Shy Rock and Lisa Lee. I think about in the mm -hmm. 80s, I'm thinking about what Shantae and Sparky did. And then later on, here come like MC Light and Queen Latifah and right. Moni. And then later after that, you got Foxy and what's your name? I mean, it's oh, like, you got to put it, have the B in that Queen yeah. Latifah. Oh, area. you don't go right. Have a B. Heavy B is a beast. Come on. She's a monster. She's a monster. Okay. She's a monster. You know, and, and Bahamadia just as well. Okay. You know, um, but. It's hard for me. I could say who stand out the most. I, who I really, really appreciate because she was so diverse was um, Lauren Hill. Yes. Okay. Lauren Hill, yeah. who I think you know, and then you look at the the Remy Ma's, the Remy, the, 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 right the Nicki Ma, Nicki Minaj, respect, uh, Cardi B. What do you think of Cardi's success? I'm gonna tell you something. Honestly, I'm not a hater at all, but you know, I know she can do better than what it sound like. <laughs> okay, all right. But <laughs> you asked a question. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> no, 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 I ain't it. You mean like flow, Ooh, or, or, content, huh? In think? what way? They got to have the whole full package. Okay. You gotta be her old full package. Once again, you got to learn. Hey, if it took Mary J. Blige to step her game up as being a, a pure R and B artist, yeah. the same thing you hardly could be a, a pure MC uh -huh. or a pure rap artist. And I think it's fair to say, uh, 
uh, on the level. She's still relative. She's a new artist. Like, she's a you, new you, artist. You know what I mean? Like, she, and, and you know, would have been on what two years? Yeah, like if that. I mean, that she's you had know? this kind of um, this kind of prominence. When you look at, um, but not 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 no need to stop you. But then again, I just mentioned about a young ma. Now you yeah. know her skill level is crazy. Yeah, compare that to Cardi. Cardi got the machine. Young ma don't have the machine. Who got pushed further? Uh huh. That's it. Okay. She made hit, you know, catchy songs. <laughs> she made yeah. hit records. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's uh, cute. Uh, <laughs> red, <laughs> <laughs> red alert. I love it. Um, when you look at, you know, when when this all was starting, and we were talking earlier in the conversation, we was talking about the battles and all these different things, and how the machine got involved, how the industry got involved, and early on, I think we were naive to the business of music. I know we were. Yes, we we was. We, 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 we all were. Yes. But when you look at the success of a P Diddy, or you look at the sex success of a Queen Latifah, or a, a, a Jay Z, I'm just using those names off the top. Mm-hmm outside of the just music industry, but how to utilize music to become these juggernauts in the business world. Uh, what are your thoughts, man? You know, uh, I'm, see that's I'm, a- I'm so happy about that. I'm very happy about that because for the fact you showed that hip hop had grown into so many different avenues and showed that it could be accepted in so many different ways. Uh-huh. I mean, you just can't always look at us as just somebody that coming from the hood on the corner. Uh-huh. You no, know, we had graduated. We had stepped up. We had moved on. We had touched the world. Uh-huh. So that's what I look at. I'm, I'm more for that. When you look at, um, let's say, someone like an E-40 or someone like oh, a Snoop Dogg, you know, be do these dudes are from the West Coast uh-huh. and have been as successful as any of those other names I yes, named, uh-huh. you know, and it was probably a little harder in the beginning, you know, yeah. but they took it, 40 took an independent route. But when you see that, how hip hop has been successful in every region, uh, where before it wasn't always. But you know what? Even though he took it as an independent, just like mm-hmm. I, it, was, it was short, and even mm-hmm. like P down there, but look how long they last. Yeah, because, exactly. you know, if you start from scratch, you learn your ins and outs, you know, your do's and don'ts, you know, and then you fall, you learn to get back up and keep it going. And that's why they are where they at today. That's why they are. DJ Red Alert is here, ladies and gentlemen. G from the Bronx. Hey. G. Stand up, Hey, what's up? What's what's good? What's good? What up, G? What's your quick Yo. question? Quick question. Quick question. Um, all right. So I've been around for a good good minute, man. From back in Cedar Park, all the park and all that, right? Mm-hmm. So how do you how do you feel from that era right there to where we are today? Do you feel that there will be any types of changes in the music? Will it go back to that, or will it continue to grow into something more than what we think it will be? It's hard to say if that ever will go back to where it was in the beginning. All you got to do is learn to how to embrace what you had done along with what you're doing now and sandwich it. Just like I was saying earlier this, um, this past Friday, I learned how to sandwich everything from the, the different eras and, and everybody enjoy it. Where the young ones, they probably listening to like the Tigers and the Gunners and everybody, but they was in there dancing to the sounds that I, put, that I introduced. So, I mean, you know, it's a how the way you got to accept what is it they doing as well as what you bring it to them. That's what it is. So, yes, it will never go back, but you could also learn how to sustain it by keeping it involved with the present time. Gee, man. Thank you for your call. You're a citizen, man. That's the way I'm Red, you might have to come back and do part two, three, <laughs> four, right. and five, man. For real. I, I, hey, I appreciate you. You're my brother. And, uh, and can I say something real quick? Absolutely. I still remember to this day when both uh, Tech and you had me up there during the Gavin Convention and spent the whole entire night. <laughs> on that radio, the wake up show. Yes. And right. How many artists did we have coming through this? Shit, man. We called it the Woodstock of hip hop. <laughs> this was like, what was that, 91, 92 or somewhere about then? And, yes. And, and KML, uh, for the first time, they let us take over two nights. Wow. Uh, this was never before done, man. Right. Like, and we had every, we might have had easily 50 artists. <sighs> man. And we put Red to work. <laughs> it put me to work, man, but I had a ball doing that. But we were all looking at you in awe, and then it was funny when people would walk in the room and see that he was doing the show with us, man. It's just, 
It's a special moment. We actually put out cassette tapes, Wake Up Show, freestyle cassette tapes, where you could find the Gavin, mm. uh, all that broadcast. Uh, so it, it exists. Go down in history. I had to That's ask. Crazy. Crazy. Absolutely. Love you, Red Alert. Appreciate Love everybody you, man. in here. Okay. He could have went and played basketball. Good thing he right. made the decision to go to hip hop. Hey. How about that? Okay. Uh, we want to thank our guests for coming by today. <laughs> she would tell. She would tell Edgy of four. Yes. Okay. And you could catch uh, the the new movie on Netflix. The boy who harnessed the win. It's his directorial debut. He's also the writer and he's starring in it. And it debuts this Friday on Netflix. DB, how can they reach you? Reach me everywhere at it's really DB. And we also want to thank our guest DJ today, Wonder Wright, the one and only Megan Wright. Okay. Okay, she got a new song called Unsure that features Young Blue. Yo, Joey Bladass. Jo- Joey Badass. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, she would tell fucked everybody up today with that. <laughs> Trying to get names right. Joey, you know what it is. And Aaron Ray. Yeah. Uh, and you can find that. That's uh, that's being released now. You can reach DJ Wonder at? At DJ Wonder everywhere. Hey, you can check me out on Instagram at OQ Shoots. And tomorrow we got a big show because we got De La Soul stopping by. Mm-hmm. KJ Smith and Q Money. Okay. I was going to say, you want to have Red uh, drop a question for De La Soul? Oh, 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 Red, Red, Red. We're going to have De La Soul in tomorrow. Uh, think of a good question you can ask him. I'm going to give you a second. Think about it. Something mm-hmm. something that only y'all would know. Okay. Uh, All right, Tracy. Man. How can they reach you, Tracy? Citizens, uh, find me on Instagram at it's Tracy G I T S T A C Y G. Also, make sure to show Heather B some love. You can find her everywhere at the happy hour WHB. Rich, nice. The AR room. A and R room. Uh, big shout to Lex Sequoia, who was actually in that video dancing like red said the girl they were young kids and now they're grown she was eight i think years old in the video oh, and lex, now yeah. lex sequoia is 25 yeah lex sequoia nice. is an artist rich been working with but she was in our she was in the anthem video nice we're gonna end with the anthem by the way okay you got a question yes ask them how that the creation of the song buddy became how did that took off how how did from scratch become to what it is Red alert. There it is, man. Y'all want to talk to Red, you can at, I mean, what, social media at? At, at cool DJ Red Alert. Cool with a K. All right, I'm at Real Sway across the board. Red mentioned Gunner. Today you're going to catch that Gunner interview we did with him <laughs> last week. That should be up. Um, also, uh, we put up Big Baby Miller, and he did the five fingers of death. He'll be fighting <laughs> Anthony Joshua on June 1st at the Barclays. No, Madison Square Garden. I mean, Madison Square, uh, Madison Square Garden. Both of their freestyles are up. Uh, let's go to Sway's Universe. You want to hear this interview back? You can do it live. All you got to do is SiriusXM.com. Slash on demand. I'm at Real Sway across the board. Until tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. We have nothing left to say. No love. 20th anniversary is called the anthem from the album This or That. Sway and King Tech, DJ Revolution. Enjoy.